Please rise for the prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we call upon you this evening asking for your guidance in our decision making. Give us the wisdom to make our judgments based on the best interests of this community and the children we serve. These things we ask in your name. Amen. Good morning, we have pledge. Yes. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ms. Boche, roll call, please. Mr. Campbell? Here. Mr. Egan? Here. Ms. Jackson is not with us. Ms. Lee Bowman? Here. Ms. Lemoyne? Here. Ms. Dysart? Here. Mr. England? Here. Mr. Long? Here. Mr. Smith and Mr. Warner are not with us. Ms. White? Here. I want to take a moment of privilege, please, um, tonight. Uh, we had a former board member that passed away, Mr. Lindeen. Mr. Lindeen served his parish for a long, long time. They served mm -hmm. on his board, I think, over 10 years, on huh, Diana? I think so. And uh, so uh, but it, it's, a, it's a great loss to this parish because he did a lot of great things for the kids. And uh, he, fell, he was still lending money out, you know, that, you know for the school. So, that, so. So we can save a moment of silence. Really appreciate it. Thank you. I thank you, and uh, the those go out to the Dean family. Okay, uh, we we'll go to item number two, the education committee. Miss White. Thank you. Yes, on two point one, we have the long range uh, strategic plan. Action plan by Ms. Mary Lametta. Thank you. Good evening. Just wanted to give you the update for our long range strategic plan. As you know, we write a five year plan, and the plan we wrote last year was our first year of the 2021 2026 plan. So the first um, item in your, in your handout is basically the overview. It is our four goals and the objectives beneath, beneath each goal. Our first goal, of course, is reflecting teaching, learning, and assessment that assures student achievement. Goal two, effective and certified employees through ongoing recruitment and, and PD. Goal three, responsible finances and support service, which can enhance teaching and learning and environments that are safe and secure. <clears throat> Excuse me. And finally, goal four, positive impressions of our public schools and re-imaging. So these four basic goals, we, we outlined the objectives below them. What you have beneath that, alongside we have a vision and mission on the side and our core beliefs. The thicker packet is the action plan that we'll use to help reach these objectives so basically each year we come through and we tweak the action plan just to help us further refine and make sure we're really on our way to reaching these goals and meeting the objectives so i want to just take a couple of highlight things to talk to you about tonight the highlight in yellow lets you know anything that we've tweaked or added and the things i'm going to mention tonight are things we've come to you before with because we've notified you in advance of things we plan to do next year one example is in the teaching and learning segment. I've explained to you that we're transitioning from the Power School LMS to Canvas LMS. The teachers have gotten some training before they left. We're offering some summer training and some August training. So that's something we spoke about a few months ago to let you know that was coming. Additionally, we, um, we as you know, we're working toward increasing the percentage of students who graduate with some college and career either experience or college credit. And Ms. LaBeouf came in and did a, an extensive presentation on the Reimagine. Grant, we've talked about the dual enrollment opportunities we're trying to get to the students, you know, through high school. So one piece that we've added is to try to get the middle school students and parents some information on the middle school end before they come to high school at the eighth grade year to let them know the opportunities we now have available so they can start trying to earn the dual enrollment credits earlier. Our big goal is to get dual enrollment credits before 11th and 12th grade to try to get the freshmen and sophomores some opportunities to earn some credits. We want to build the interest at the middle school level and let the parents and students know what's going to be available to them when they hit high school. So Ms. LaBeouf's going to train the middle school counselors, make sure they're aware, and we're going to call that into some information for the families when we schedule when we do the individual graduation plans for middle school and try to get the eighth graders a jump start and get them excited about the opportunities that we have when they step foot into high school um, secondly goal two, our goal for effective and certified employees through recruitment we do have we did highlight for you the ways we're constantly working with teach st. Bernard and our educator pathway I know you had the power educators here um, at a prior meeting, you got to see them work and get certification. So we have multi-layers uh, we're trying to work through to get more certified teachers here 
in our basically grow on home program and our teach St. Bernard as well. Uh, additionally, under responsible finances and support services, goal three, to enhance teaching and learning in safe and secure environments, we've partnered with the LSU Stevenson Disaster Management Institute. They are working with our districts, with our schools and principals to create the district disaster and school disaster and recovery and emergency plans. And they're actually going to come and do some training for our administrators next week at Data Fest. So we did highlight that and put that in. They're going to do a day long training on Tuesday <clears throat> for us over at Shamit Elementary. And then in the positive imaging and impressions of our school, we did also add a component mm -hmm. with the parents and families trying to make sure they're aware of the dual enrollment and all the opportunities we're trying to offer the students so they can come through high school with as many dual enrollment and college credits as possible to help, number one, relieve some of the financial burden on the parents as the students make their way through college. As many credits we can get them while they have the school support and while they're able to get it under our umbrella without having to pay for each credit is just a benefit to them financially and it helps the students kind of get a few courses under their belt and get a leg up for when they hit the college campuses. So I didn't want to belabor the whole plan. We've been through the plan with you, but these are some of the key points under each goal and we've talked to you about these as the year, this year has progressed to make you aware of our coming plans. So this is information we've given you mostly this spring to let you know what was coming for next year. Thank you. Do we have any questions from the board? Do we have a motion to send it to the board? I'll make that motion that we send it to the full board for the Okay, board. Mr. England, and do we have a second? Second with Kelly. Thank you. Uh, please cast your vote. It's not working. No, oh, there it is. Motion, motion. motion. Eight. No. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lamanna. Appreciate y'all being here. Thank you, Mary. Okay, the next one is personal items, uh, personal changes for July 2022. Ms. Okay, as you can see, we've got um, another group of people that we have been hiring to get us ready for the opening of school. We still have a few openings that we are working very diligently to fill. Um, eh. But also along with these, I just wanted to make our announcement. We had the interviews for the assistant principal of Andrew Jackson Middle School. Mm -hmm. And um, we had, you know, four well-qualified applicants for that particular position. And I'm happy to announce the interview committee has chosen Aaron Larson as the assistant principal of Andrew Jackson Middle School. Um, Erin has been with us for the past seven years. She was an English teacher at Andrew Jackson for several years and had some of the highest VAM scores in the entire parish. She was consistently, our kids, she was consistently scoring in the high 90 percentiles in advancing student achievement in the with the kids that she taught. So she was one of our, I guess, best teachers that we had. We were very fortunate we had brought her into the central office to do the coordination, middle school coordination of English and social studies. She did the curriculum writing. She has coached uh, many of our teachers throughout that process. Um, she also is a presenter in our Teach St. Bernard program in helping our new teachers become comfortable with implementing instructional strategies. She's a certified mentor, uh, teacher, and trainer, and she's been an adjunct professor for that through UNO as well. And uh, when she was at Andrew Jackson, she did a lot of work with the PBIS and positive behavior support and worked toward a positive environment for student discipline and learning. So. She's very excited and wanting to get back into school-based administration, so we uh, think she's going to do an excellent job as the assistant principal of Andrew Jackson Middle School. Well, so. congratulations. Go out to Ms. Lawson. I know that she's doing a great job. Yeah, excellent. <laughs> and Ms. Foche, uh, how are we staying with teachers now? Uh, I know we we've been <laughs> have an advertisement out there for us. We are heavily recruiting. We still have some openings. Um, 
I think Ms. Pritchard is working diligently to get those openings filled prior to the beginning of the school year, but we're experiencing that same shortage everywhere, not only in our community, but statewide and nationwide mm -hmm. in, fi in finding certified teachers. And of course, that's why we had started our own certification program with Teach St. Bernard. We have a little over 30 this year. Mm -hmm. Uh, many of whom, and, and this is what I think we're most proud of, because we're making that concerted effort, and you saw that presentation at our last meeting on the growing your own concept, where not only do we have some paras on that track, we also are having the Educator Rising program with our high school kids, but this particular Teach St. Bernard class has about 70% of the applicants who grew up in our community and are coming, graduated from our schools and are coming back to teach with us. And we feel really, really good about these particular candidates because hopefully they're in that to make it a career and in it for the long haul. So it's always great when we can reemploy our former, or we can employ our former graduates coming back because they're living in our community, making their homes here and looking for long-term careers. So. We're working on it, Mr. England. Right, thank you. Okay. okay. I know what that will have here before we know it. Uh -huh. And uh, the school's going to start in just a few weeks. Oh, yes. So, yeah, Ms. Voce. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Voce, on the resignations, um, I see we have quite a few. Mm -hmm. These are people who signed on at the end of the year and are just resigning now, or? Um, some of them are just resigning now. Uh, or they're just getting their paperwork in and we had known about them and some that we have filled their positions already Okay, but formally or retiring as you can see many of them with that August 1st date um, and <coughs> Some you know, uh, I see a couple of them who are relocating with their spouses to other parts mm -hmm. of the country as I'm looking at some of these names mm -hmm. uh, I think we have one going to New Zealand wow. <laughs> with our family yeah. and mm -hmm. um, so there are many reasons why you know people are moving at this particular time and uh okay i know it's <laughs> <laughs> just when the principals feel they have their whole school staff then all of a sudden you do get a resignation so that's mm -hmm. one of the yearly battles that we fight it's like yeah. an even school board we law um we're gaining uh -huh. new teachers and then losing all that the amount of teachers also have resigned mm -hmm. but it's good to hear that the uh, Teach St. Bernard uh, program is definitely successful and we're yielding mm -hmm. new teachers in our own program so absolutely thank you very much uh, another question Mr. Fuji. how many employees do we have right now approximately oh about 960 mm -hmm. some odd at last count yeah just the general public right under a thousand you right, know realize 950 960 two employees down in St. Mm -hmm. Bernard Parish right here right. Right. this is a I am that there's no action, so we'll just move on to the next one. Ms. Dysart, yes. um, this is the Executive Committee. Thank you, Mr. Uh, England. Okay, next item on the agenda are transportation routes. 4.1. Ms. Russo. Good evening, Ms. Russo. If you right. notice, congratulations. <laughs> you notice Ms. Gennard did not come. <laughs> no, she, she went on her vacation. Uh -huh. <laughs> and congratulations again. Yes, yeah. congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, if, if you notice your own folder, we have the first, I'm going to go over a little bit with the first page. They have the total number of routes and the routes for each school on the top line. And then if you look down, and that we actually did have a little change in that from last year, Smith and Araby had a little change in the number of routes and that had to do with con consolidating some routes to make it a little more efficient for the students. And then if you look down on the list, our to total routes, we have 51 routes, and then our, and which is the same as last year, but the bus stops, the miles driven, the students have all increased from last year to this year. And hopefully that's going to continue with the COVID ramping down a little bit and we think more of the students are going to be riding the buses again this year. And they, they have the school times at the bottom, but nothing and none of that has changed, as I'm sure you know. So that, I want to say, as you move on through your packet, each packet has a one for each of the schools. Mm -hmm. 
<coughs> and on the top sheet of the packet, the route number, the school, the CHS, of course, like Shelmet High School, so I know you can, you can feed you on that. The start time, the number of pickups, the number of students, and how long it takes to run the route. And then as you look through, you can see each of the maps is highlighted as the route, the starting point, the ending point, and then the stops are on the back sheet. And of course, as you know, I just kind of started, so I don't really know a lot. So if you have some questions, I did bring Dawn while we dispatched it with her. So she came so she can answer any of the questions that you might have that I don't know yet. Yeah. Ms. Russo, let me, let me, well, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Go ahead, Ms. Okay, Russo. Okay, thank you. Um, how are we doing with bus drivers? I know we got advertisement all the time to what? get new bus drivers. Are we okay with our bus drivers to start the new year? We haven't the same number. We have enough drivers for the routes. We don't, we don't, we don't, sure. I know they had some that were trained, and because I sat in on some of the bus driver training, and so I'm learning some things about the buses. Mm -hmm. And I do have to say, before I left this evening, somebody called Nick's, how do you go about being a bus driver? Yeah, good. Lord, so, That's good. So I told him, call Central Office. <laughs> Get that telephone the website number. number <laughs> so they could look it up. Right. So I think we're going to be pretty good with that. Good. Thank you. And yeah. we can always use bus drivers because not only I mean, even when we have each one of the routes completely filled, then we have to have a substitute list because you have people who are absent each day. And then I know poor Dawn, who's sitting mm -hmm. over there, is yes. consolidating <laughs> routes and doubling up and those kinds of things which make it difficult. Yeah. So we also hire full-time from the substitute list. So if people are interested in getting full-time positions with total benefits, we will like we're saying, we will train them completely, get them, help them get their licenses, they're on our sub list, and uh, then they can move up as soon as we have an opening and they've satisfactorily completed a probationary period. So um, we are constantly looking for bus drivers. And as Ms. Russo was saying, if you're interested, you call the bus garage for information. <laughs> and they will tell you over there how to come about beginning the training and getting the training done to um, get on as a substitute driver and then eventually a full-time driver. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Thank you, Ms. Voce. Mr. Long? Ms. Voce, at one time I think we had uh, a little trouble uh, getting substitutes. Uh, mm -hmm. That's not a problem anymore? No, uh, we still have to. You know, it, it's just like teachers right now. We have a lot of new people coming in, but we also have a lot of veterans. And as people are retiring and leaving us, we it's, it's sort of like you have fewer people in between. So we've got a lot of veterans, and you sing on the retirement, and when you see the personnel changes, a lot of people retiring, and then the new ones coming on. So as far as subs go, we can use as many substitutes as we possibly can get and we can um, like we say you we can train you we train you to drive the bus we provide the materials for you to help you study for to get your CDL license with the endorsements that you need on it and then we do the actual driving with you our drivers we hire to train you to actually learn how to drive the bus in this training program how long does that last it, it just Couple depends on how quick the person is, how quickly they catch on, what the time frame is, and then the driving part of it is one thing, then the studying part in passing, you know, for your CDL, for your license, and then with the endorsements. So it'll vary for different people depending upon, you know, how and quickly they can pick it the up. The pay for these people, is it adequate? I'm, well, um, they, they're paid, well, when we're training them, we're training them for free. Usually if they go to some other agency to be trained, mm -hmm. um, they're paying for training. Okay. So what we do is train them and it's at no cost to them. Okay. And then once they acquire their license, then we can put them on usually with another driver at first to help them out and learn it and then, you know, when we feel um they're capable enough to let them you know let them drive on their own it's usually under supervision in the beginning mm -hmm. 
Okay, thank you. Okay. okay. Are there any other questions on the transportation rocks? Okay. There being none, well, um, I guess we should go ahead. Right. Can I get a motion, motion. to um, accept the tra Second. transportation rocks? There was a motion by Ms. Lamoine, seconded by Ms. Ms. Lemoyne. Any further discussion or questions? There being none, please cast your votes. Motion passes 8 0. Thank you. Thank very you. good, Ms. Russo. Yes, we, we appreciate these maps for sure. Thank you very much. And thank you, Dawn, for coming tonight. Yeah, thank we you, appreciate Dawn. it. And all of your expertise. Thank you. Okay, next item is permission to request proposals for building management system upgrade. Good evening, Mr. Fernandez. Good evening. Mr. Dewey. Okay, uh, in your packets is, uh, is a copy of the proposal that we'd like to put out for building management systems. The building management systems are the systems that control the environmental controls in our buildings. Uh, we are looking to upgrade. Uh, our buildings have, uh, a lot of them were new after Hurricane Katrina or renovated, but now they're getting a little older and these systems are due for an upgrade and with the uh, federal ESSER monies, they are providing funding that is eligible for use for this purpose. So we're gonna take advantage of that for this purpose. So we would like to get permission to send out this RFP. Uh, Mr. Dewey will explain more in a little more detail about exactly what we'll be asking for. Sure. Thank you guys. Um, really all we're looking to do is upgrade to a contemporary building management system. Um, there are a number of companies who are qualified and I'm sure will be interested in pursuing that, but um, what we have now is reached end of life. So the just like an operating system that is no longer supportable, you have to upgrade at some point. And along with that, we have the opportunity to go to a non-proprietary system, which means we have an open uh, style of communication with the new hardware and software that we have so we would not be locked into any one thing long term should we ever have the need or change our minds to look at other options um, that being said we can also increase energy efficiency a lot by doing this update and avoid a situation where our current system may fail us and it, and it can't be placed as is we'll have to go through this at some point anyway so this allows us to meet that challenge prior to and be a little proactive in solving this problem um, and if there's any specific questions I can answer I'd be happy to do so okay are there any questions at this time mr. long uh, mr. Dewey doing the uh, during the height of the COVID uh, problem and I know it's not over yet but there was talk uh, about upgrading our uh, ventilation systems in public buildings so that, that are we are we uh, have we done that already or will we do that in the future yes sir so fortunately we we were in a wonderful uh, situation when it came to that that was a, a huge hot button because obviously fresh air inundation into public spaces is, is a big piece that's been recommended we have a contemporary enough mechanical system already that has fresh air uh, built in fresh air intakes and inundation built into all of our buildings so we've been able to kind of check that box from day one without having to go out and do anything additional to our buildings um, we certainly have it um, you know inspected and uh, optimized uh, based on current best practices uh, that we're getting as, as this whole situation with COVID obviously unfolds and we learn more, but we're able to do that already. So fortunately, that's not something we have to go out and do at this point. Okay. Uh, so uh, our present system is adequate. Uh, we don't have to change any filtration or anything? No, no, no. Should, should another pandemic come along? Or of course, no, no. Our current filtration system meets all of the MERV ratings um, that are required uh, for the specific size particles that they filter. Um, and uh, in doing so also doesn't restrict our system to the point that we can't heat and cool it properly either because there's a fine line between um, 
you know, uh, going to a point where you're filtering so much like a HEPA, HEPA filter, but it wouldn't allow our systems to run properly. But we are meeting all of those, really meeting and exceeding all of the recommendations on filtration in fresh air mix in all of our buildings currently. So we're good there mechanically. This, um, this particular building management system piece we're looking to do is more the software that allows us to control and regulate the buildings via automation rather than um, rather than you know just a traditional thermostat up and down all the time with so many so many uh, classrooms and the need obviously to try to manage uh, energy efficiency the automation system is, is preferable in the large settings like a school so as of right now we don't have a management system in place we do yes sir we okay. do um, the, the the current system that we have in place has been with us as we have either rebuilt or renovated all of our buildings after Katrina um, and, it, and it is functional and it is it is serving our needs at the moment but that particular system um, has reached end of support um, so we are going to have to upgrade it in the very near future no matter what we do so this is just an opportunity to do so before okay. we are in any kind of bind or um, you know ultimatum to do it okay thank you yes sir um, Mr. Dewey, uh, yes, I realize this is an RFP, but do you have any idea, a ballpark figure, what a system like this would possibly cost? It's 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 used to be a very predictable um, item, and it's it's hard to say at this point because there are so many new players. Mm -hmm. um, this could be, you know, this could be something that we're very surprised by, um, in in a good way. Um, we could see what used to be a half a million dollar um, system come in for a fraction of that at this point because of all of the new innovations in what they used to have, to, just, just like with computers, you know, they used to be the size of a room and then you can now do what you used to do with that and something that fits in the palm of your hand, you know, right. so there's a lot of that that goes into it and um, even though our buildings are contemporary, um, many of these items that we have are, you know, 14 to 15 years old in some of our buildings at this point, so we can do a lot better with a lot less expenditure at this point. So. I know that doesn't give you an exact number, but I, I feel like it's a pretty wide range. I expect to see, um, you know, a pretty large uh, difference between the, the high and the low uh, type proposals. Okay. Alrighty, and thank reiterate you. again the funding source that we're able to use for this. The, the federal funding source, this will be from the ESSER dollars that are available, and this is, a, is a, obviously a qualifying category for that because it, it has a okay. lot to do with health and well-being of all of our buildings. So it's not going to cut into our general operating fund budget oh, at good. all? Okay. 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 Yeah. All right, thank you. Yes, are there any other questions? Mr. Campbell? I make a motion that we grant permission to request proposals. Okay, there's a motion by Mr. Campbell. Is there a second? A second. Seconded by Ms. White. Any further discussion or any other questions? Okay. There being none, please cast your votes. Motion passes 8 0. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, next item is an amendment to the resolution to employ Hammond, Sills, Atkins. Dice know it Perkins LLP is special counsel. Okay. If you remember back in November, we passed a resolution to employ special counsel, at which point those are sent to the state attorney general for approval. So we went ahead and did the resolution to employ Hammond, Sills, Atkins, Geis, Noah, and Perkins as the special counsel in the educational arena. And you can see listed in that letter, too, is all the different um, school systems, and they do represent many others as well. Um, in sending it to the Attorney General for approval, what he would like us to do is to amend or add a Section 5 to the resolution. Mm -hmm. And we sent this out to you in your packet so that you could review it. And basically what it's saying is if there's ever a federal issue that might impact not only our own school system but other school systems statewide that might have state implications, he's asking that we put into the resolution that our attorneys would notify him as the Attorney General for the state and that he would be able to comment on that and possibly come and appear if it happens to be an issue that would have statewide implications. So they looked at that and uh, feel that it is fine. 
so what we're bringing this to you today is the same resolution that you passed in November mm -hmm. with this section 5 added to the back of it um, incorporating the language which was requested by Attorney General Jeff Landry to be added into our resolution. Ms. Dyson. Okay, yes, Mr. England. Yeah, I'd like to make a motion that we send it to the full board with a recommendation. Okay, there's a motion to accept the resolution with the amendment of Section 5. Mm -hmm. Mr. England, is there a second? Okay, Mr. Campbell seconds it. Any further discussion? And I guess we should read the resolution maybe at, at the, the regular, regular meeting. meeting. The regular meeting. Okay. Right. We'll read the whole thing again. Okay. For the minutes. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, any other discussion on the resolution? Okay, there being none, please cast your votes. Motion passes 8 0. Okay, next item, insurance item, Mr. Ingot. Okay. This is a tabulation for the renewal of student and athlete insurance for the St. Bernard Parish School Board for the period August 1, 2022 through July 31st, 2023. This matter was heard previously, and uh, we have a recommendation for the insurance of $40,097.52. Yes, and uh, as Ms. Deegan said, this is uh, for student athletic insurance. Um, we are recommending that we uh, accept the renewal quote from Risk Services of Louisiana of $40,097.52, which is the same premium as the previous year. So there was no increase in premiums. Are there any questions? Yes, Mr. Ingrid. See, the, the premium stays the same, but it uh, looks like we're covering not just the athletes and head start, we, we're covering all pupils. Uh, uh, it also, time. as you recall, in addition to athletic insurance, it also covered students during the school day on trips and things of that nature. So that will continue as well, and it will also cover some of the school time coverage for students while they're in school. So this is the premium we would pay as a school board. Uh, correct. And I think we collect yes. fees from the students. Is that correct? Uh, the students, uh, we collect a fee for the athletic portion of the insurance. The Only athletes the athletic? that participate, they pay a, a fee partial for the insurance and partially for the physical that they have to take because we have to pay for a physical for them. Uh, Students also have the option of buying a 24-hour policy for an additional cost as well, and that's open to all students. And this is mandatory, right, for the, for the athletes? Correct, yes, sir. But it's not mandatory for uh, anyone No, else? if they're not participating in sports, it's not mandatory that they buy the extra insurance. The students are dealing in students in some of the performing groups as well. They have strenuous, we also have a catastrophic policy that will cover catastrophic events, which fortunately and that's in hand, but that, that's, that's part of the, this $40,000 premium that the school system pays. Okay, thank you. Any further questions or statements from the board? Do we have, have someone to Make the motion that we accept this. Mr. Egan, I'll, I'll make that motion. Down oh, there. Send okay. it to the full board for a recommendation. Right. Joe, excuse me, Mr. England. Do you have something more you want to say? No, no, that's question? fine. I was just going to make no, the motion. <laughs> <laughs> well, you want to flip a coin or yeah, something? Flip a coin. Go ahead, no, I'll it, second it. I'll second it. Now, you're not going to change your mind in the middle of the stream, huh? No, no, we just had a little pause <laughs> okay, there. Okay, so. we have 
the motion has been accepted by Mr. Uh, Long. Yes, ma'am. If I, w I could, Mr. Fernandez, is this the only um, bid that we got, we received on this? Yeah. We had inquired of other places. This is the best option available. There aren't many uh, outlets out there that will provide this type of insurance. It is in a market that has a lot of participation from insurers. But this insurer is the one that's offering us the best option. Okay. I know Tulane used to um, bid on this. Tulane, Tulane Cooperate is part of our insurance. They're a uh, provider of service. So this insurance uh, allows students to go to Tulane. And, and get seen. those physicals. Yeah, for and physicals. Prior. Yeah, they're a service to provider. They're not an insurer. Okay. But they are part of this whole They're plan. affiliated with risk management. Well, they're not affiliated with risk management. They're affiliated with the school system, and they accept the risk management insurance. So okay. they will accept this insurance this from insurance. us and work with this yeah. group. Right. Okay, as right. in the past. Right. Okay, right. thank you very much. Thank you. Anything further from the board? We need a second to the motion. No, we already have that. Okay, well, wait a minute. Maybe I'm confused, which is possible. Mm -hmm. We have Mr. Long who made the motion, okay? I'm sorry, who was the second? <laughs> I'll make it. <laughs> okay, now we're sure? Yeah, we sure? <laughs> okay. And we have Miss England making the sex. If there's nothing else, please vote your machine. <laughs> Motion passes eight zero. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Egan. Um, item number six, superintendent's notes. Miss Foche. <coughs> well, first of all, at the regular board meeting on uh, two weeks from tonight. You know, we talked last month about our school emergency and crisis plans and did a brief update because everyone, I think, was a little uneasy after what has been happening around the country and um, these mass shootings. But as we talked about last meeting, we have been undergoing a year-long process with the LSU Stevenson Disaster Management Institute and doing a pilot program in developing the latest school crisis and emergency plans that even uh, GOSEP will be using many of, much of what they're, what uh, LSU is doing for us as a template for other school systems. Well, we have completed that and at the regular board meeting, um, they will be coming to make the presentation go through it in detail, of course not the plan, but just the process. And uh, we're asking our partners in this, which is our local sheriff and fire department, our first responders, and John Ram with um, our local emergency preparedness team and our parish president to come as well so that that presentation can be made in more detail and everyone in the community can see exactly what we're doing. So. Just letting you know that on the 26th, two weeks from tonight, we'll be making the formal presentation. Um, we have met with all of our schools and our school teams. They've got their all their plans done. We'll have the central office group, our um, continuous operation plan done as well um, by that time. And um, we will have done the in-service with all of our school administrators and central office administrators so everything will be in place as we open the school year so we'll go into that a lot more detail two weeks from now when we'll have all the players here to have that discussion you know at our board meeting now along with that um it seems like we don't have summers anymore <laughs> <laughs> you know people would think um the summer is a time to that downtime take vacation and such but it seems to be our busiest time. So we just completed all of our summer programs. The, uh, the play, Anastasia, that was done was absolutely incredible. Those of you who had an opportunity to see it, um, it was just beautiful. So that wrapped up as well. We have one of our summer camp programs still running. Our academic games is going, going on right now but we've closed down our summer skills program, our science STEM camp, and all of our other summer programs. Uh, we have a short respite this week, but this coming Monday, 
the 18th, we have what we call our data fest the entire week with our school administrators and central office administrators. So next week we'll be doing in service the entire week for our opening of school, going over school improvement plans, cognate, going over these emergency crisis plans, getting more up to date on the long range plan that you were just shown a few minutes ago. Um, and we'll also be doing a lot of in service on special education discipline and also Title IX investigations. Y'all have heard, I think, a yeah. lot on the news and such mm -hmm. over Title IX, mm -hmm. and most people think it just pertains to the colleges and universities. No. Um, we're not only had it uh, originally been applied in athletics, but then it moved into um, sexual harassment, those times, types of things that involve students like adult to student or student to student. Well, it is also in the K to 12 arena. And what we have to do now is go through extensive training on Title IX, where we have to set up a process and have a Title IX coordinator train people on our staff to do any type of investigations, decision makers, appeals people and such. <laughs> So one of the days that we have set aside next week will be in training all of us, our school-based administrators and central office administrators in all of the Title IX regulations and assigning particular duties to people. So we're gonna have an extensive week next week on PD for the full five days. The following week, July 25th, our new teachers will be coming for a week. Now we've got Teach St. Bernard going on and we had that going on since July, June 29th, but our teachers new to the system who are not in Teach St. Bernard will be coming the 25th for their week of in-service. And then the following week, believe it or not, begins August 1st and all of our teachers report right Monday, back. August okay. 1st, we do a few days of in-service and our students we have our opening ceremonies on Thursday, August 4th, and then first day of school, Friday, August 5th. So the next three weeks are going to be extremely busy, uh, probably our busiest time of the year in getting everyone ready, all the preparations done. And uh, we're looking forward to opening up another school year. <laughs> okay. Close by quick. Seems huh? like we never close anything before yeah, we open so again, open. so. Yeah. Ms. Dysart. Yes, thank you. I, I just want to give, um, and I know we have quite a few summer programs, but the um, STEM camp that was held at MoMA Center, yeah. uh, I know quite a few children who attended, and, and the, I've heard nothing but um, great, things. great things and from the children and from the parents. So um, a lot of great learning taking place. So thanks to Ms. Acevedo and her, her entire staff and administration, great job. and also all the other summer programs. We appreciate all everyone's, our teachers and personnel who work for us during the summer for all these other um, programs that we have during the summer too. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Ms. Dyson. Anyone else? Okay, we'll move on to item number seven, adjournment. We have a motion by Ms. Campbell, second by Mr. Egan. All in favor? Aye. Aye. This means adjournment. Good night.